Hello, I'm Nick Collins. This is a 15 minute presentation. I'll be quick. Uh, this is a collaborative work from any project within uh, the HSE, including the HSE grant. Thank you very much to the enclosing grant for enclosing us. Uh, it's with Peter Manning and Simone Tassatani at Durham University. And I'm going to talk about uh, some musicological and some creative outcomes from working with a big corpus of electronic music that we collated. Uh, here's the dream. Um, <laughs> I think I'd like to talk now of uh, musicology. I like to talk about music these days, AI within music. Um, uh, yeah, that's the dream. Um, it's wonderful new um, interests and applications of artificial intelligence in, in music. Um, now, at Durham, we've been collecting, working with various corpora, big collections of audio files. One that I looked at a few years back was actually from the Uber website, which is a lovely site, even if it does breach copyright a lot. Um, uh, uh, which is an electronic music collection they had of 476 MP3s. You can still get it online. Um, we've also grabbed the first 120 CDs, uh, bought them from the Emperor Digitales Electroacoustic Music Collection, as we have that. And then in the present project, we've made our own custom historic electronic music collection, which I'll talk more about in a second, and also interested very much in artist-by-artist artist collected works. Um, but that, maybe that's a story for another day. Um, the tool, the main tool that we use... Uh, for audio analysis across all these different audio files is the Supercard Music Information Retrieval Library, which I demoed at a previous internal meeting of this grant. And I'm not going to try and do a demo today, but maybe you'll trust me that this thing exists. It's all open source. You can get hold of it. It will work fast over audio files and let you extract features. And its other benefit is within Supercollider, which works very well for concert work. So it, um, uh, it can easily be adapted to have live feature extraction and make live applications. Uh, and that's the creative bit I'll do at the end, I'll do a little demo uh, of running something live. Um, so for the mini-project, um, historical corpus of electronic music between 1950 and 1999, um, trying not to uh, just exclude popular music and trying not to exclude art music, but try and reconcile them a little bit. Um, so the inclusion of both. Uh, the corpus comes with metadata, uh, so in particular what year certain things are released and also the, uh, all the details of where we sourced the audio from, the particular CDs that we were using um, and some other stuff. Uh, so for instance, for each piece in the corpus we've uh, noted whether it, it, it might be termed art music or popular music, um, even though there's always problems with categories, but in as much as you can, um, and also whether it um, involves female composers or not. Uh, I'll come back to that in a bit. Um, so the 1,878 WAV files it's about 7 days worth of audio takes about 120 gigabytes um, it's all from CD quality from CDs we purchased all the CDs um, that was legal briefly in the UK and then they, the, it was revoked so it's actually illegal um, but anyway it's not on this laptop, honest um, and we've got the metadata as well. Um, and we should hopefully be releasing it soon, uh, dependent upon a, a publication that's under review. But as soon as we can get that published, we'll release the corpus. Well, not the audio files, obviously. That would be a massive breach of copyright. We'll release the feature extraction across the audio files. Uh, uh, we collected 22 features, timbre, rhythmic, pitch-based, and spatial, across all these audio files. Um, and the calculation time for that sort of feature extraction is about six hours. It takes the machine uh, a 28th of the time that it takes a human being to listen through. Whether the quality of listening is any better than a human, well, of course, it isn't as good as a human. It's not perfectly human-like. That's the big research challenge. Uh, but it's still of interest to see what the computers can achieve. The holdings within the corpus, um, this is across years. Uh, there's a lot less examples of electronic music earlier on. Um, and you can see there's a massive examples in the 1980s as the sort of mass proliferation of popular and art music styles comes to fruition. Um, so it's not perfectly even, we freely admit, not perfectly even by years, but it's, at least it's not like Uber Corpus where there are missing years. Um, we have at least got some, a few examples for each year. Um, total durations per year of the sort of the actual time durations per year. Again, it's uneven, but, but there's content there. Um, Having got that data, you can start to do the feature extraction. You can start to look chronologically by year what, what happens. Here's a quick example. Uh, this is loudness, perceptual loudness 
over the audio files per year from 1950 to 1999. Uh, strangely enough, things get louder. Um, you probably know that in the 1990s in particular, there's that production loudness war going on, so that has its effects on the average. Um, here's some data that um, is from the five most significant trending features in terms of things that um, changed over time. Um, it doesn't because of the scale and the way that it's been uh, separated to show five different lines, it doesn't maybe look that significant, but there is a significant trend there. So it's, uh, the sorts of things that change over time quite significantly are um, the should we say, uh, aspects of the rhythmic patterns that the computer detects, um, the strength of the tonal component uh, in terms of the sort of sustained frequency components within the sound changes over time, the percussiveness goes up, but of course, the popular music stuff comes in, so that's essentially the explanation. Uh, the use of low frequencies and of high frequencies um, also increases over time. Um, if you think of the early lower quality recordings in art music, um, that's a possible explanation for that as well. Uh, and of course, popular music pushes the bass. Um, um, we've also tried out little bits of machine learning investigation uh, over this corpus, because in the metadata we've got um, for each piece annotated whether it, we think it's art music or popular music, uh, whether it's from female or male composers. Um, for the art music versus popular music, we can get 95% discrimination. Um, this is with a controlled methodology where this is, on a, this is the rating on a test set rather than a training set. Um, for distinguishing female and male composers, it's a bit harder. Um, we take a style and size match subset of the total corpus. We admit that it's not gender balanced, the whole corpus, but if you take a, a gender balanced subset, um, you can get 71% discrimination. Whether that would extend to a much larger corpus, I make no great claims. I'm just telling you that we did it in this particular instance. Um, how am I doing for time? got seven minutes left. So creative applications. I like to think of core position rather than composition. We've got a big corpus of audio files these days, then um, one of the research frontiers of composition is working with lots of audio files. They can be a source of direct sound material, but you can also come up with interesting new uh, models by analysing all the files. Um, you can work offline, you can work online. Um, so I'll do a demo of each. Here's a piece in 2015. Um, this is a chronological sampling at acoustic study. So we, this was at the point that we had about halfway, uh, a thousand historic files. Uh, and I made a piece... Um, Peter Manning's retirement concert that's with a sort of 16-channel piece going across the history of, of electronic music to 1950-1999, firing small grains of historic sound into the room. Um, but we don't have time for me to play the, the two-minute version, so I'm going to play you the one-second version. Uh, this is the version that was done for the Leap Year Festival, uh, sorry, Leap Second Festival uh, the other year. Um, so you're going to listen to... Uh, a thousand or excerpts of a thousand historic electronic music pieces from 1950 to 1999 over the course of one second. Are you ready? There you are. <laughs> okay, now, um, another possible creative application is in concert critics. Because I don't know about you, but I hate waiting for reviews. It'd be much better to be slagged off right there and then in the concert hall. So what you can do, uh, if you have the uh, your sort of immediate feedback to the performer, what you can do, you've got this corpus of around 2,000 electronic music history files, you train up a, a model, um, and then you play live, and your output is compared to the historic corpus, and then the, um, the machine tells you, the machine critic tells you what you sound like as you go, so that you know exactly how derivative you are. Let's demo it. This particular bit isn't published. It, it, it's just a trial I've been touting around very recently. Um, so I'm going to, if you'll indulge me, I'll just run my kind of Algo Rave style uh, set. Maybe you get the T-shirt out. Yeah, <laughs> there's an Algo Rave T-shirt. Um, so that's just a live coding mixer. I'll just, this is Super Collider. I'm just going to run some bits of Super Collider code. What I run doesn't really matter to you. Um, it's more the principle. Um, so it's already running. 
So we'll we'll set a few things going. And it could be different things we choose. Oh, I'll just choose that. Try that in it. So I've, I've just made a few elements. Um, if I was doing a proper set, I'd obviously take a bit more time over this, but there we go. there's some stuff. Now we run the retromatic thing. Uh, it may take a while to initialize itself. Okay. It's saying it's a bit like Yellow Magic Orchestra now. Ah, Das. Deutsche Amerikanische Freundschaft. Yeah, which possibly fits. And then if I run something that's a bit more to make art music, electric acoustic. Um, so I just cross fade. Something that's a bit more maybe palatable to the art music lovers in the audience. One of them saying John Carpenter. Oh, I'm not sure why. That's then set them down to anything. Change the drum swords. Okay. I think it's Barry Truax, The Wings of Nike. I don't know whether that's a. Uh, uh, Else Mary Powder, Barry Truax again. So, yeah, just giving some reference. What about both at once? Bruce Hark. Even a bit of a Jean Michel Jarre. So, uh, <laughs> so there you see. Um, um, oh, two minutes early. <laughs> That's it. Might have been having to get Give me a sec. Let's just find it. Um, uh, wasn't the top. Uh, oh no, it was the standard deviation of the IO. So actually, the art music initially has a bit more rhythmic variety, and then it's a bit less rhythmic variety in uh, recent things where the popular music comes in. Okay. Probably because there's a few more, shall we say, um, uh, repetitive beats. Okay. 